It's gross out. Hey everybody, it's Chris. August 27th, 2018. 2018? It's not 2019 yet, right? Anyway, just had my 33rd birthday the other day, which is weird because I feel like I should feel like an adult. Does that ever happen? Does that ever kick in? If it kicks in, let me know what age that kicks in because I'm not feeling it yet. Birthday weekend went really well. I got to relax a lot on Friday, which was my actual birthday. And it was just kind of hanging around the house, watching some uh, Disenchanted on Netflix, playing some video games. I did some live streaming for you guys, if any of you got to join that. Got my tattoo done. It's still healing. I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, still healing a little bit. I had a little bit of seepage last night, um, which I learned the hard way to wrap it before you go to bed. It's good advice that, you know, no one told me until... I made streaks on the pillow. Went to my favorite place to get burgers that night because I got to have a cheat meal, which is Gordy's. And it is this tiny little hole in the wall, old fashioned burger diner place, um, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And it is so good. And they're only open a few months out of the year, basically during the summer and stuff. So like, I get super excited. That's the one thing I, every birthday I, I do is I, I just want to go to Gordy's and I want to get a burger and I want to get a shake or some ice cream with it. And that's exactly what we did. And it was fantastic. Parents took me out for drinks uh, later that night too, which was great. I got a flight and got to try a, a few different beers and it was like the perfect way to do a birthday for me. Also got a lot of really cool gifts. You'll see in another video that Rochelle got me a mouse rat t-shirt from Parks and Rec, which is awesome because I love that uh, shirt. I love the joke. I love that character of Andy Dwyer and it was the first TV show where Rochelle and I really binge watched together. It's weird that that's kind of a marker now, right? But anyway, I loved it. It was something really special. Uh, she also got me a subscription to uh, Superhero Crate Dot com. I just got the first one just arrived today, so we're gonna see what's inside. I mean, this is the front. I mean, it doesn't look super special on the front, but but we'll see what's in here. Oh, that's cute. Okay, read it. All right, what do we got here? All right, we got some. We've got some DC socks, and uh, for those that of you that know me really well, like in real life, IRL. Sorry, you know that I like to wear. Um, goofy and nerdy socks to work since I have to dress up all the time. Oh nice check this out look at this <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to wear that and it looks like we got three We got three comic books in here the new 52 G.I. Joe combat that's gonna be interesting because I really just started getting into the world of G.I. Joe this year, because we did a G.I. Joe cartoon for the podcast this year, and, and my exposure to G.I. Joe was kind of limited before that, so that's cool. Here we've got Batman the Shadow, so that'll be pretty interesting. I, I don't know much about the Shadow other than just, like, general info, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. The Batman crossovers are almost always good. Batman crossing over with, like, the Ninja Turtles, with Elmer Fudd of all people, which is one of the best comics I've read all year. Oh yeah, so if this is anything like it, this is going to be good. A Marvel one that I've been wanting to read and haven't gotten around to about Monsters Unleashed. Oh, that's going to be awesome. You got Fing Fang Foom uh, right there at the top. That is amazing. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Also got some really cool gifts from uh, my best buddy and co-host of uh, Saturday Morning Cartoon Boom and pretty much collaborator on all things nerd that we do for the Nerd Sloth Network, Joseph. Um, who sent me a couple games via Steam and tabletop games through the mail. Dude always spoils me, and, and I can never live up to it. It's ridiculous. Look at this. Look at this. He sent me some new die for D&D. &D. These things are so heavy. These are metal. Listen to it thud. Just like that. It, it barely bounces. It just slams right down, and I love it. it the feeling is, is fantastic. I love how it feels in my hand. And yes, I did just roll a one. I'm not usually a big birthday person. I don't like a lot of celebration, but this was a good year. I had a good time this year. One quick thing that's just kind of been on my mind today, and I just want some input from you guys if, if you have anything, is that my organization has put me on a committee that is going to be dealing with diversity and how to figure out what gaps that we have uh, as an organization and um, what things that we can do to not only help our image but more just to change 
the culture of our organization. And that's hard. I was put on this because I just get really passionate about inclusiveness and, and about just people in, in general. And I do have a large uh, impact on the education at this organization. So, so I'm happy to be on it, but I struggle with how we can do that. We have like 15,000 employees and it's like, you can't teach people to be inclusive. You can't teach people to tolerate others um, because that is a personal choice and a lot of that has outside factors and a lot of it's very ingrained from either childhood or life events or past events. Like all kinds of things can play into that. So you can't teach somebody to be tolerant. What you can teach them is to be aware. So, so what I brought to the table was the idea that we need to talk to people that have dealt with our organization, whether it was uh, negative or positive, and and get their stories. You know, what what did you feel as a minority, or as LGBTQ, or as someone that is deaf, or struggles with money, or or something like that? What did you feel when you entered our doors? How were you treated? Did you feel welcome? Was it a welcoming environment for you? And what I want to do, being in charge of education and media and things like that, is I'd like to be able to take these stories, whether it's videotaping them or just uh, t writing out their stories and stuff like that, and, and, and put it out there for all of our employees to see, along with trying to get them to think about times where they felt on the outside whether it was, you know, something in high school, like they were picked last for gym class, or they one day found themselves in a room where everybody had an opinion one way and they were the only dissenting viewpoint. Sometime where they felt alone. So that we can stress the point with people that are minorities, whether it's something physical like race, or whether it's gonna be something like sexual preference, or somebody with mental illness. For some of these people, that one time that you felt on the outside. Some of these people feel like that every single time they walk through our door. My thought process is that we just need to relate it to anyone so that they can understand the feeling and they can empathize and then we introduce, okay, this is their story. Here's the gaps, here's how they were treated or here's how they weren't treated. Here's how they want to be treated. So it's a tough task, it's a hard subject to really um, wrap your head around to make sure that it's appropriate in every direction and you know what call me an SJW or whatever I really don't care what I want is for any Organization that I work with or work for I want people to feel comfortable I want us to feel approachable and I want them to feel welcomed anytime that they walk through our door or interact with any of us. Because I don't think that's a lot to ask. I don't think having an open mind and being respectful is a lot to ask. But obviously some people don't feel that way or some people just don't understand yet. And you know, there's that whole thing and we mentioned this lots of times at our meeting today is people don't know what they don't know. And so just trying to make people more aware of the amount of diversity and the amount of things that could feel different um, depending on all these variables exists. But it's something that's really close to my heart and, and I hope that we can find a way to do it well. So that's gonna be something that's on my mind. If you guys have any thoughts or if you have any experiences that you can share, please do that in the comments below because I, I definitely would like to talk more about this and this is something that I don't want just to use for this organization I work for. I want this for my everyday life. I want to be approachable personally by anybody because I love people. I am definitely a people person. So that's that and right now I've got to get ready and set up because we're about to record Saturday Morning Cartoon Boom for the week over my birthday pick, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, which, oh my god, just re-watching it, yes! Can't wait to talk about this one, and I can't wait for you guys to hear it on Saturday. I'm so excited for this. But thank you so much for clicking on this video. Please leave a like, leave a comment, please subscribe. Every little thing you can do will help me out, and I really appreciate your support. Please get in contact with me anyway if you want to talk to me on Instagram or email me. I'd love to just have a conversation, even if it's just in the comments of this video. Thank you again so much, and I'll see you later.